Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we went through the analog joystick module and that was an absolute blast, I loved that. So now we're on to the IR receiver module. So lesson 13, IR receiver module. IR obviously stands for infrared. So using the IR remote is a great way to have wireless control over your project. Infrared remotes are simple and easy to use. In this tutorial we'll be connecting the IR receiver to the UNO and then use a library that was designed for this particular sensor. In our sketch, we will have all the IR hexadecimal codes that are available on this remote. Okay, IR hexadecimal codes. Okay, we'll also detect if the code was recognized and also if we are holding down a key. Hmm, interesting. So we're going to be using a remote and a sensor module, a receiver, and then three female to male wires. Okay, so IR detectors are little microchips with a photo cell that are tuned to listen to infrared light. IR detectors are little microchips, okay. They are almost always used for remote control detection. Every TV and DVD player has one of these in the front to listen for the IR signal from the clicker. This is just a bunch of uh, theory stuff, right? So, since this is not an electrical engineering class, we're gonna skip all of this. So let's look at our connection schematic. So we've got the IR receiver, which I don't know where it is right now. I'll look for that in a minute. Um, so it's got three pins, a ground, the VCC supply, and then a data line. So sim nice and simple. So obviously ground goes to ground, VCC goes to five volts, and a data line goes is gonna go for this one to digital pin 11. Super simple. All right, so let's find our infrared. What is, this? is this the receiver? Yeah, this is the receiver. So I assume this is the remote we're gonna be using. This kit could have really done with some labels. Well, I know I'm looking for a free pin device. So. Ah, it's in here. There you go. So I picked this up going, oh, it's just a potentiometer, but it's in here. There it is. Glad you had that was challenging. Alright guys, tutorial over. Thanks for watching. This is how you find the infrared receiver module in the Enigu most complete starter kit. Glad you had that was challenging. Okay, finally we got there in the end. Okay, so we just need red wire, uh, purple wire and black. Cool, that's it. Okay, so nice and simple. So these this time the ground and all that is labeled which is nice so ground and then r is i assume vcc yep and then y is the data line cool and y is going to pin 11 on the digital side vcc is going to five volts and Ground is going to ground. There we go. So after wiring, please open the program in the code folder, IR receiver module, click upload. To upload the program, see lesson five. Before you can run this, make sure you have installed IR remote library or reinstall it if necessary. Otherwise your code won't work. So I'm gonna try and run it without the installing of the library, just in case I already have the library. But if not, then I will just install the zip file that they have They've given us in the folder okay so let's try it one time upload okay so it didn't like the um, fact that there's no i remote dot h so let's go to sketch include library add add dot zip library then i'm going to navigate to the folder there we go and then so we have this ir remote or i remote so I've added that library, hit upload again. Okay, it doesn't like the for loop that's inside the code. But that's not my fault, is it? But it accepted the code, that's fine. So I had a problem with a for loop, but it still accepted anyways. Okay, all right. So um, let's, before I start pressing buttons on this, let's just check the rest of the text. So. Next, we will move the remote robot I 
our remote out of the library folder. What? We do this because that library conflicts with the one we will be using. You can drag it back inside the library folder once you have done programming your microcontroller. Okay. So this talks about using a switch statement, but as far as I could see, they had commented out the switch statement. That's it, no explanation of the code again. That's very frustrating. So they've got the program here, which is like an if statement with a for loop and, and then an a nested if else if statement here, okay? Then they've got the implementations. So this is all commented out. The implementation effect of the above program is the same as that of the following but it's more concise and then they've got switch and then case they've just got switch statements here where basically based on the hex decimal value of each button so when this value here is being pressed then it's going to print power to basically say that you've pressed the power button so this switch case I understand this I don't know why they didn't stick with this they said they wanted to be more concise here by being more concise, I don't understand this bit of code at all. And I have no way, like, yeah. Okay, well, let's just run it anyway. So, open up the serial monitor. So, if I press the power button, let's get the retriever. Power button, nice. Volume plus, there's volume minus. Uh, play, forward, fast, back, function stop, down, up, zero. EQ, ST, what's ST, REPT, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nice, that is cool man, that's amazing, That so we're basically just passing in hexadecimal values to this, so how does it do that, like it just beams, it beams a bit of light and it's able to tell Okay, well, we're receiving this particular hexadecimal value. Okay, so what I would like to do, because for myself, you know, I plan on using all of these tutorials in my own work moving forward. So unless there's a YouTube video somewhere else of somebody explaining this code, this is basically pointless to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cheeky here and try and comment out all of this, okay? And then I'm going to say, why have they commented out each line instead of just doing the whole thing? This is going to take a while for me, okay? Okay, so I've just uncommented this whole switch case because this is so much more easier for me to implement. So now if I hit upload, let's see if this still works. Because if this does work, then I have the hexadecimal value for each button. And I can connect this to my robot myself or any other project I'm working on. Which is just sick. Like Imagine just, you know, having a bunch of Arduino stuff around your house and then just going, yep, yeah, that, that would turn on the plant irrigation system, that turn on the security light, that turn on the office light. It's amazing, man. Switch, spin the camera around, activate the server motor to rotate the camera 180 degrees. This is exciting stuff, man. Okay, so let's check the serial monitor. I just pressed, okay. So something's gone wrong here. With the serial monitor open, it's just printing other button continuously. Okay, so the reason why it's printing other button continuously is because we've got a default here. Default, for those of you that don't know programming, with a switch case, it's basically saying, if none of these are pressed, then what should we do otherwise? And so I would say do nothing, like just don't do anything. Why are you printing other button all the time? Well, it doesn't like it. Okay, maybe I, I need to get rid of this default here. Okay, so now there's no default case. Define, repeat, okay. Right, here we go, IR receiver button decode. So I don't know why it's printed that title. Let's check, maybe that's part of the switch case. No, it's not. Okay. All right, let's start pressing buttons. So we've got power. Nope. Function stop. Nothing. So it's, it detects the pressure because you can see that LED illuminating, but nothing. Maybe we needed a full case, but 
I don't see what would be the point in constantly printing other button. So, what if I have the default case and I have delay 100 milliseconds? So, it has a problem with something. Okay. So let's uh, open serial monitor. So, now what we're saying is that if nothing's pressed, then just wait 100 milliseconds. So, now pause power no we're not getting anything so let's take a look at the original code that we have apologies once again this is just way over my pay grade here so i say pay grade who am i kidding i'm a student i don't get paid i'm going to try and just copy this top bit here if if we've received the input Okay, and then we'll put another curly brace here, and then we'll hit upload. So I've now just put the if statement to detect if we've received something. Okay, so now power. Oh dear. Well, that kind of worked. <laughs> EQ two. No, okay. So it received the power key, but then kept it. Okay, so I feel like we need, probably need this for loop. There it is, man. And then, or maybe we need this, I receive new, I R receive dot resume for the next value in the world. We'd have to put that, what? At the end of the if statement after the case. So this is for the switch case and then receive the next value okay let's try that okay so zero minutes started power repeat power repeat two so this is a bit better three five six eight so it's kind of working now but it's printing repeat for some reason so what we're saying here is that in the case of this print repeat so i don't know why it's printing this this hexadecimal value yeah i don't know what what purpose this repeat case serves but if i comment it out then my issue of the repeat thing should just be gone okay so now i should just be able to press buttons look at that perfect so now that's working but i don't know two three four five six seven eight nine on the back end, that repeat might have served some function. I don't know what it would have served. Pause, pause, pause. Volume, volume, volume. But now, the way that this code is now, although you can see I don't fully understand it, I can at least start to change what stuff does. So, for example here, with when the power button's pressed, right, what I could do is I could just do this. For example, if I had a variable of some sort, I could do x is equal to 1. I, mean, I need to obviously declare the variable somewhere. Let's do it up here. Right, so that should work. So you can now, I could now with this code here, I could now start to change and do things based upon different button presses. So instead of, if x was a whole function that turned off my fan, I could then press the power button and it's receiving it and then it's making X. Um, so actually to show that that's working, what I could do as well is I could do when this function stop button, when this function stop button is pressed, then print the value of X. So let's do that. So serial, although I don't know how to do that in Arduino ID, <laughs> I can do that in C. Um, how do you print the value of X in, in this? I don't know. Is it like that? In C, you would use percent %d. I think that's how you do it. Let's try. Hmm? It liked it. It's, it accepted it. Okay, so just to explain this again. So what should happen is when I press the... Okay, no, actually, when I press the function stop button, it should print the value of x, meaning zero. Then when I press the power button, x should become one. And if I press function stop again, then it should print the value of x, which should now be one. 
that's how we know it. it's fully working so let's hit function stop okay zero look at that <laughs> that is brilliant okay wait ready power button okay so nothing happened there i pressed the power button function stop one look at that yes ah oh, i love it this is brilliant i'm so excited this is perfect for me i mean it's just the ideas and the possibilities that are flying from my head now are crazy okay so obviously the easy and simple thing to do here because we're just we're literally just printing words onto the screen so for pause for example you could change that to play slash pause for example you can do whatever you want here okay and then inside the serial monitor now if you press play it will it will do play pause instead of just pause so i'm not sure how you would have done what i've just done there with this code here so that's why i'm glad they included this case because here i can clearly see each of the hexadecimal values that represents each button so this is much more simpler for me so i'm very happy with this if you guys enjoyed this leave a like and just let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see from these tutorials anything else that you'd like to see me do if you'd like to see me do more of this kind of programming stuff let me know i can always make follow-up videos especially because i'm going to start to go through some arduino books myself so I could always come back and improve these tutorials. Maybe I can come back and say, oh yeah, now I know how this works. If this is simple. I was just dumb. So I'd like to be able to say that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And I shall see you in the next one. Peace.